The Shenley Laboratories, producers of Penicillin Shenley and Shenley Pharmaceuticals, presents the Encore Theater. The Encore Theater play tonight, The Life of Louis Pasteur. Our star is Paul Lucas. Shenley Laboratories presents another in a new series of great dramatic programs. Some of our stories are fact, the struggles and accomplishments of great men of medicine. Others are fiction, stories of devotion to an ideal, individual heroism, or great courage. By these programs, Shenley Laboratories would remind you that medical science and progress is not cold, impersonal research or pages of statistics, but a warm human story told in living terms whether it's the life of one of medicine's immortals or the simple everyday record of service rendered by your family physician. And now, the life of Louis Pasteur, starring Paul Lucas as Pasteur and George Zuko as Charbonnet. I cannot begin to tell the story of Louis Pasteur without telling many stories. For his story must be told in terms of human lives and human progress. His own lifetime is not even so much his story as the story of an era in medicine and of people marked for death who lived because of him. Who was he? What was he? Well, first and last he was a chemist. A chemist and a fighter. And never a very tactful one. Take that matter of the pamphlets he had distributed all over Paris. Louis, a copy of your pamphlet just arrived. Oh, good. Let me see it. Mm -hmm. Doctors, surgeons, wash your hands, boil your instruments. Microbes cause disease. Did they say whether they have started distributing these? They said that by nightfall there would be a copy at every home in Paris. Well, then by nightfall, my dear, we are sure to be in trouble in a good many homes in Paris. Even, I suspect, in the palace of the emperor. Yes, the story of Louis Pasteur is the story of many people. It is certainly the story of Monsieur Chabonnet, advisor on health matters to Napoleon III. Chabonnet, a man who hated Louis Pasteur. The pamphlets afforded Chabonnet a rare opportunity. Your Majesty, look at these pamphlets. This man isn't even a doctor. He's a chemist. Oh, yes, I recall. He claimed to have found little animals in sour wine. (laughs) Yes, Your Grace. By heating wine to a certain temperature, Monsieur Pasteur was able to destroy them. I presume he plans to cure blood poisoning by boiling our blood. Heaven forbid. I won't tolerate such practices, Chabonnet. Of course not. Why, if doctors want to do anything so absurd as to boil instruments or scrub their hands, and be laughed out of the hospital. Ask Pasteur to come to court, Monsieur Charbonnet. We will put an end to this nonsense. Monsieur Pasteur? Yes, Your Majesty. Monsieur Pasteur, in the preservation of the wine industry, you have been of service to France. It is my command that in the future you confine your work to that field. But, sire, what are the pamphlets he's already written? For that, monsieur, you will publish an immediate retraction or suffer my displeasure. What happened, Louis? You'll have to pack, Mary. We are leaving Paris tomorrow. Yes, Louis. We want you to apologize for the pamphlet. Oh, no. But I won't. I won't take back what I know is true. I'll die first. Oh, don't worry, my dear. Someday you'll prove you're right. Uh, where are we going, Louis? To Arbois. We may have to spend many years in Arbois. The 
The story of Louis Pasteur is the story of the sheep herders and cattlemen of Abwa, in whose cause he spent the next few years. And because of those years, his story also is the story of the first president of France. This is the first president of the new Republic of France, President Louis Adolphe Thiers. <laughs> Gentlemen of the cabinet, you are aware of the conditions upon which Bismarck has consented to withdraw the German armies from France. In addition to forfeiting Alsace-Lorraine, we have to pay an immediate indemnity of five billion francs. Monsieur Charbonnet, you are chairman of the Agricultural Board. How do you suggest we raise the money? Your Excellency, I hardly know what to say. Industry is at a standstill, farms are being neglected... Devastating plague is destroying our cattle everywhere except in one small province, the district of Arbois. Why is there no plague in Arbois? I don't know, Your Excellency. You don't know? As chairman of the Agricultural Board, you should have investigated. Monsieur Charbonnet, you and your assistant, Dr. Martel, will kindly leave for Arbois immediately. Yes? I beg your pardon. We were sent to Arbois to discover why your sheep have escaped the plague. We were directed here by a neighbor who told us his sheep have been treated by someone who... Oh, you're quite welcome. I'm sure Father will be delighted to see you, Monsieur. My name is Annette Pasteur. Pasteur? That chemist again? So, Monsieur Charbonnet, we meet again. This is Dr. Martel, Father. How do you do? Won't you come in? Our quarters are very humble, but you are most welcome. Thank you. So, you're now the savior of sheep, monsieur. Well, I suppose you tell us about their microbes. I'll be glad to. We are convinced, after eight years of experimenting, that we have discovered a vaccine, which, when injected into the animal, will set up an immunity. Oh, ridiculous. It will take 80 years to convince me. Yes. I am sure it would. Well, I've heard enough. Are you coming, Dr. Martel? No, Monsieur Chabonnet. I'm going to stay. You do as you please, but I'm going back and make a report to the cabinet. With you or without you? I'll make no report without an investigation first. And so Dr. Jean Martel met Annette Pasteur and her illustrious father. And his life became part of the story of Louis Pasteur. He stayed several days trying to grasp Pasteur's theories. Here. Now, look at this slide under the microscope. You see? It reveals a number of dormant germs, or spores as we call them, which are found in the grass and soil wherever diseased animals have been buried. Now, our healthy stock eat the grass, they become infected and die. The germs become spores again, and the cycle starts all over again. And you say these spores are present even here in the pastures at Arbois? Oh, yes. For an animal that hasn't been vaccinated, Arbois is one of the worst areas in all of France. Father, I'm sorry to disturb you, but the newspaper just came, and there's a proclamation in it. Oh, let's see. No, anthrax at Arbois. What in the name of heaven are they talking about? Government to appropriate huge areas for grazing... Charbonnet urges farmers to bring healthy sheep to Arbois free of charge. They die, all of them. The fields are, 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 are reeking with contagion. Even if they let me, I couldn't inoculate them all. It would take weeks to make the vaccine. But is there anyone we can appeal to? Yes, there is, but it won't be easy. I can call a meeting of the Academy of Medicine and tell them about your discoveries. Would you do that? Of course, it's the only thing we can do. They came from all over France to hear about anthrax. The great medical men gathered on the floor of the auditorium. And in the gallery, the people sat to listen. Farmers, sheep herders, cattle raisers. And in their midst sat the small, humble figure of Louis Pasteur, listening to Dr. Martel. I tell you, I've seen with my own eyes what Pasteur has done for the cattle and sheep of Arbois. We, on the other hand, members of the Academy of Medicine, have contributed nothing in the fight against anthrax. Then why in heaven's name don't we listen to a man who has? Dr. Martel. Yes, Monsieur Charbonnet? Monsieur Pasteur was discovered to be a charlatan ten years ago when he made a ludicrous claim concerning the cause of childbed fever, which he was never able to prove. 
Consequently, I see no reason for humoring him further. I disagree. If someone's got a cure for anthrax, I want to know about it. Yes, so do I. Very well. In that case, I propose an experiment. Let us take 50 normal, healthy sheep, 25 of which will be vaccinated by Monsieur Pasteur. The other 25 will remain as they are. I shall then infect all 50 sheep with anthrax. And I defy any man or any vaccine to save one of them. Well, Dr. Martel? Well, I... I can't take it upon myself. I defy him to try. Messieurs, I accept. You have treated all 25 of those sheep? I have, Monsieur Charbonnet. I am now at liberty to inject into their veins the blood of an animal that has died of anthrax? Proceed by all means, Monsieur Charbonnet. Uh, Monsieur Pasteur, I am from the London Times. Would you care to make a statement? The sheep that have not been treated by me will die within 48 hours. The others won't even be ill, I suppose. At least let us hope they won't. For the sake of France. In a moment, we shall return to our play. But first, an important message which vitally concerns all people. Today, with many parts of the world in the grip of famine conditions, penicillin, the drug known as the savior of human lives, now is bringing a new benefit to mankind through its use in maintaining the health of domestic animals as well as human beings. By combating disease in animals, penicillin helps to increase the amount of milk, meat, and other foods so vital today in the face of the world food shortage. These new uses for penicillin demand a large supply, and among the firms contributing to that supply is Shenley Laboratories. Because of its extensive background of research in mold and fermentation processes, many of which Pasteur investigated, Shenley was particularly well-fitted to play a part in the development of penicillin and allied products. Shenley Pharmaceuticals, developed to date, include penicillin tablets and troches for administration by mouth and penicillin ointments for local application upon your physician's prescription. In producing these, it has been the aim of Shenley Laboratories to contribute all within its power to the cause of man's well-being. This will continue to be our goal. We are now turning our resources and facilities toward perfecting other types of pharmaceuticals so that your doctor may have more and better weapons with which to fight disease. And now, back to the life of Louis Pasteur, starring Paul Lucas as Pasteur and with George Zucco, as Charbonnet. The story of Louis Pasteur is, too, the story of the people he loved, the story of Annette and of Jean Martel. You're very quiet, Annette. What are you thinking? Oh, all sorts of things. I was thinking about Father, praying a little, I guess. This experiment is so important to him. And I was thinking about Mother and how good she is. And a little about you and how good you are. What were you thinking? You've been very quiet yourself. I was thinking about you. I was thinking that you're very beautiful and very good, very understanding, and that the man you accept for a husband will be the most fortunate man that ever walked this earth. And then I started thinking, if I were that man, and then I was completely lost. If I were to accept a husband, it would have to be someone very much like you. And if you don't ask me, I don't know where on earth I'll find one. Annette. Annette, my darling. Mrs. Pasteur, have you any idea what's going on in your garden? No, and you come away from that window immediately. Your daughter is being kissed. Oh, she's your daughter too, Mm, Louis. Not when she's being kissed, (laughs) and she's all her mother's. (laughs) Mm. Oh, how good it must be to be as young as that. Mm, How good it is to be as old as this. Louis, do you realize what this means? Tomorrow, if you're successful, every farm in Europe will want your vaccine. You won't have a moment's peace, day or night. 
Marie. The benefits of science are not for scientists. They are for humanity. Mother! Father! Sean and I have something to tell you. Mm. With your permission, we want to be married, sir. Well, I should think so. Yes, the story of Louis Pasteur is of his loved ones, Marie and Annette and Jean and the others. It is also the story of 50 sheep, 25 live ones, and 25 dead. The story of Louis Pasteur is the story of the great Dr. Lister, who traveled from Edinburgh to observe his experiment. They met, shook hands that day, two men who are making history. Monsieur Pasteur, you are making the entire world microbe conscious. I foresee marvelous benefits, especially in the field of surgery. The honor is mine, Doctor. I'm well acquainted with the work you are doing on antiseptics. Thanks to you and your brilliant leadership. Today marks a definite turning point in the world of science. You can no longer be classified merely as a chemist. You are an inspired benefactor to all mankind. Yes, the story is of many people. Supporter and opponent, friend and enemy... Man and animal. The story is part of the lives of millions who never knew him. Of those who survived operations because of sterile instruments. Of those who survived deadly diseases because of his knowledge of the microbe. Louis. Louis, what is going on in the laboratory? And why is that dog howling? Now, Maria, don't get yourself all upset. There's nothing to be so concerned about. Louis, you're not working with... Oh, Louis, no. Not hydrophobia. Well, I suppose you may as well know. I've been trying to discover a cure for months. I've pledged myself to wipe it from the earth. And the story is part of the life of the Russian doctor, Zaranov, who defied Pasteur's old enemy, Chabonnet, on the floor of the Academy of Medicine. I came here commissioned by my government to investigate Pasteur's efforts. My people have for centuries been preyed upon by rabid wolves. And, messieurs, I would worship, I would kneel to any man who could point the way to a cure. How do we know bacteria are not harmful? How dare we say they do not do the deadly work that Pasteur claims? We invited Pasteur to attend this meeting. He ignored the invitation. Monsieur Chabonnet, if Pasteur is unwilling to come to us, then let us go to Pasteur. Go to Pasteur? Humility, monsieur, is a virtue not only in those who suffer, but in those who hope to heal. Well, gentlemen. It's fortunate we found you in, monsieur. It is the wish of some here that the Academy of Medicine honor you with, with the committee visit. Dr. Zaranoff has been reading your recent statements in the journal promising a cure for rabies. Dr. Zaranoff, as usual, the press take liberties. I said only that I was on the threshold of a vast new world. I understand. May one inquire when you intend to cross that threshold? Monsieur Charbonnet, science takes a step, then another. Then it stops and reflects before taking a third. Step by step. I am reaching the ultimate conclusion that all diseases are caused by microbes. Oh, Pasteur. You don't believe me, Charbonnet. Look at this vial. In my hands, I hold enough rabies virus to wipe out the city. Let me see that. Now, be careful. Don't uncork it. Why? If you have the tiniest scratch on your hand... Oh, really? Now, let me make a scratch. I have a pen knife. Charbonnet, don't be a fool. There. Is that deep enough? Give me that vial. Oh, No. Now I'll just rub this virus into the cut. Charbonnet! You fool! There. Now, Monsieur Pasteur, all I want is for you to predict the hour of my death. I came to see Monsieur Pasteur because I wanted to warn you about Charbonnet. For weeks now, he's been parading up and down the boulevards, making a great show of the fact that he is alive and healthy. You can't afford to be made ridiculous. The work you are doing is too important. I wish it were important, but it isn't. My results have all been negative. You you cannot find the microbe? Not a sign of it. I'm completely baffled. Every animal that was vaccinated with the contents of the test tube died, except Charbonnet. For some reason, he was able to resist the disease. Why, I don't know. 
Are you certain it was the same tube? Positive. It was the only specimen I had. Well, perhaps you let it stand too long. Perhaps the germs grew less violent with age. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That must be it. The germ was weak enough for the system to overcome. Come with me. I want to speak to my assistant. Oh. Yes, Louis? How old was the dry tissue when Charbonnet rubbed it into his arm? Fourteen days. That must be it, Zaranoff. Now, suppose we start with a 14-day-old virus that's no longer deadly. Suppose we inject it into a healthy animal, and day by day, as nature builds up his resistance, we increase the doses with stronger, fresher samples until he is able to withstand the actual disease. Would he not be then immune? No, no, it would never work. If the first injection did not kill him, the second would, or the third. Now, where are those tubes you've been preparing, Jean? Uh, right behind you, sir. They're all in order. Each one is dated. Mm. Here we are. Fourteen days. How many dogs have we left? Ten. Are they all well, healthy? Perfect condition. They've never been exposed. Inaccurate them with a virus of hydrophobia. And so the story of Louis Pasteur is the story of ten dogs who became immune to hydrophobia in 14 days. And it is also the story of a German doctor... And a little boy. Oh, Monsieur Pasteur, I apologize for not giving you notice, but I've come all the way from Alsace with a child who has been bitten. He's outside in the carriage. Would you help him? How long has it been, Dr. Pfeiffer? Eleven days. You cauterized the wounds? Well, not right away. It must have been 24 hours. I don't know what to say to you. Oh, monsieur, I implore you. My treatment has saved dogs. Yes, ten of them. But I haven't the faintest notion what effect it would have upon a human being. If I failed, it would mean prison, perhaps the guillotine. I am not a doctor. There are rules and traditions governing these things. This is a human life, Monsieur Pasteur. You may be able to save it. You alone in the entire world. I beg you to try. He paced the floor late that night. Hour after hour he walked, while a child's life hung in the balance and countless millions of other lives. Dare he experiment with a human life? And yet, the life was doomed if he did not. He went up to the boy's room. He sat there watching, watching. In the distance, a dog's howling lashed the night and shivered to him. And at last he knew, whatever the consequences, he had to risk them. He rose and then went into the laboratory. And the Bunsen burner that he lit was like a beacon. <laughs> How is he, John? He's improving all the time. What is that? I don't know. Shall I open it? But of course. Dr. Saranoff. Yes, you, Monsieur Pasteur. Well, of course. Come in, Dr. Saranoff. I'm sorry to intrude, but I just came from the Russian embassy. Those people outside are Mujik's peasants. They have been bitten by rabid wolves. Their villagers have sent them to you. They've heard so soon? Monsieur Pasteur's cure of the boy is the talk of the continent. But it isn't proved yet. That's why they are here, to offer themselves for the test. Dr. Saranoff, I'm a scientist. My treatment was intended for dogs. Vaccinate dogs and the disease will vanish. I only attempted the treatment with the boy because his case was desperate. But these people are all desperate. Surely you won't refuse them the same opportunity. Oh, my friend. You are their only chance. Very well. I will try. Jean, take them to the hospital. Isolate them. See that I get a full report on every case. Thank you, monsieur. Thank you. But we must have permission from the academy. I will see that we get permission. Patient number one, first treatment, 14-day-old virus. Patient number seven, fourth day. Any change? Not this morning. Continue treatment. Patient number eight. Let me see the report. Hmm. 11-day virus. The results are amazing, Pastor. Every single case improving. How proud you must be. No. No. Only grateful, Dr. Zaren. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Louis. But Monsieur Charbonnet is waiting at your house. Charbonnet? Yes. He says he himself wants the pasture treatment for hydrophobia. Louis, Monsieur Charbonnet just told me that a foreign scientist is giving a lecture at the academy this afternoon. He claims to have disproven your entire germ theory. What? Who is he? What is his name? His name is Lister. 
Dr. Lister attacking me? I'm afraid so. Order a carriage. He came in a side door, worried, almost in tears, for he loved and respected Lister. Chabonet met him at the door, his eyes warm. Come with me. They want you to sit on the platform. They hurried down a side aisle and hesitated on the edge of the platform where Lister was standing. And a man came off the platform and offered him his arm. And that man was Louis Adolphe Thiers, president of France. Stunned and completely unable to grasp what was happening, he took the president's arm and walked out on the stage. They stood up as he walked out on the platform. The members of the Academy of Medicine and the young medical students and all the people who had been able to crowd in, they stood up applauding and shouting their approval. And Louis Pasteur held out his arms to them, and the tears ran down his face. Monsieur Pasteur, I greet you in the name of humanity. Dr. Lister. Monsieur Pasteur, on behalf of His Majesty the Tsar of Russia, with profoundest gratitude, I present you with the diamond cross of the Order of St. Anne. I thank you. I uh, thank you. I... I have no words to express. Uh, you, young men, doctors and scientists of the future, do not let yourself be tainted by skepticism, nor discouraged by the sadness of certain hours that creep over nations. Do not become angry at your opponents, for no scientific theory has ever been accepted without opposition. Live in the serene peace of libraries and laboratories. Say to yourselves first, what have I done for instruction? Until the time comes when you may have the immense happiness of thinking that you have contributed in some way to the welfare and progress of all mankind. moment we'll bring back our star Paul Lucas. But first ladies and gentlemen, may we leave you with this thought. One of the most notable facts about the practice of medicine is that each succeeding discovery in the field has always become the property of all who devote themselves to the cause of healing. Shenley Laboratories pays tribute through this series of programs to this unselfish progressive ideal. We of Shenley Laboratories feel that physicians everywhere may well take pride in a spirit of sharing for the greatest good of the greatest number. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lucas. Friends, to sum up the spirit of the Shanley Laboratories program, this simple and beautiful prayer of the physician, written centuries ago by Maimonides, seems to me to be apt and fitting. The eternal providence has appointed me to watch over the life and death of all thy creatures. May I always see in the patient a fellow creature in pain, and grant me strength and opportunity always to extend the domain of my craft. This is the prayer of the physician. It is ages old. Yet today it is as new as the hope for a peaceful way of life for all the world. And now, may we invite you to listen again next week at the same time when Shenley Laboratories presents Yellow Jack, starring Ronald Coleman, a great star in a great story. Good night. <laughs> The Life of Louis Pasteur, produced and directed by Bill Lawrence, was presented through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, who this year is celebrating the 20th anniversary of Sound Pictures. It was adapted for radio by Gene Holloway. Paul Lucas appeared through the courtesy of International Pictures, producers of The Stranger, soon to be released through RKO. This is Frank Graham speaking for Shenley Laboratories. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.